you on the point, how uh, motivational words, and as well as how you uh, clear the IAS exam, UPSC, and very technical exam. Thank you very much. So I'm very lucky today that uh, I have been invited here as the chief guest of the sixth Foundation Day and officially first uh, celebration of the Foundation Day. So I think I'm very, very lucky. And uh, when I was, we, it took a little bit of time for us to find the campus, but when I came inside the campus, I was so glad to see that uh, the buildings and the infrastructure has come up so well. And uh, the presentation that I got right now, I think again and again we are saying that these were the difficulties, these were the challenges, we don't have this, we don't have that. But I think today onwards, let us focus on the positives. We, uh, we are a family here, uh, and I see that there is a lot of cohesion, a lot of unity uh, amongst all of you, and there's a lot of friendship. And it's actually like a family, a small family. That is the advantage of being a small place. If you had permanent students, you would not even know all your uh, batchmates. And you, your teachers will not know all of you. So uh, that is the first advantage that, that you have. That when even 20 years down, down the line, you will know who, who, was your, who was in your class, and where they are posted, and what they are doing in life. So, uh, and I think college, the one of the biggest things, when, if you look at the uh, national scenario, we, we talk about uh, doubling farmers' incomes. The Prime Minister comes and keeps saying it, that farmers' income, we need to double, we need to double. But, you know, in India, the uh, population is so high that the size of each farm is very less, is very small. So, uh, and food, the selling price of food will only be so much. You know, you cannot sell food at a very, very high price because that also creates a lot of uh, problems for the poor people. So the solution is to have larger farm holding. But that is not easy to do because we have such a huge population. So what is the way out? The way out is to diversify into horticulture, into cash crops, into um, rearing of cattle, beekeeping, all these other uh, allied agricultural activities, that is the only way we can actually increase uh, farmer incomes uh, in the country. So, uh, that is the main relevance of horticulture in, in our national economy. And you know that uh, a huge chunk of our population is dependent on agriculture. So, we are mainly an agriculture uh, country. And incomes out of that is very less. So uh, tomorrow when you graduate out, you will you can really make a huge contribution. Even if you are able to empower few 20 farmers, it will be life changing for them. So uh, your profession is what the core of this country is. So it's very, very relevant. And uh, given that climate change is a reality now, our summers are much more cool cooler and our winters are much more hotter. Uh, we will have to um, adapt our food production and our fruits and vegetables production according to the changing climate. So, uh, I am sure 10 years down the lines, the demand for horticulture, BSc horticulture, MSc horticulture will be very high. This, it might, I don't be doing like this. So, you, uh, you can always come and uh, discuss it with me. Uh, I'll give you my email ID if you want, you can drop me an email with, because I understand that for you it will be difficult to come to my office and uh, talk to me there. But uh, send me an email or send me a message or whatever way, you know, we'll, we'll figure out a way of contact. Because I understand that younger people have ideas which a lot of us, we lose touch with the creative side. So, and in fact, if any one of you want to volunteer, want to, uh, you know, do some part-time internship kind of thing that also we can uh, kind of look at. So uh, the idea is basically to identify certain farmers, certain uh, villages where we will take up interventions to increase yield and to um, have better post-harvest uh, management and sale. Basically better income for the farmers. So that is what the uh, project is all about. Uh, 
Then the other thing that I wanted to talk about was that, uh, and I want you to think about this, is uh, there is a lot of uh, Zoom cultivation that is done in all of northeastern states. It is not just Mizoram, there are other states also. It is very much uh, present. And um, it is, there is a lot of carbon emission that takes place because of that. And uh, carbon dioxide ultimately leads to uh, climate change. And also the soil quality that also uh, gets degraded because of the continuous burning and continuous uh, cutting down uh, because the, the vegetation that comes back is not as dense as the original vegetation. So uh, for you, it is, it is a question that I would like you to think about that how is it possible for us to give a sustainable solution to the farmer to discourage him or her from uh, June cultivation. Now, of course, we all understand that it should not happen. Farmer also understands, everybody understands. But when it practically comes to the situation, you know, to, if, if you have a slope like this, to burn it is, you can do it very quickly. But to manually cut that same thing is a lot of effort and it's very, very difficult. So, uh, think about it in terms of economics. How can we give an economical solution that uh, cost wise? our solution should be cheaper than the current uh, uh, solution that he has. So, uh, that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, then, uh, so this is all about the, uh, you know, the, see the stuff now, we can talk about uh, some, some good things about that. Like, these are your most formative years. I think all of you must be between 18 to 21, 22. So, uh, in two ways. One is that what you do in these four years will determine, in fact, not just 22, just 25, 26, will determine what your rest of your life will be. Today, you can take a choice that you know you want to do this, you want to settle here, you want to go and live there, all those bigger questions in life, which will determine how your life is when you're, say, 40 or 45. Uh, at 30, 35, 40, this, it will be very difficult to make that choice. Suppose one of you wants to go and settle in the US. Today for you to implement that and to actually achieve it is much more easy than if you want to do this when you are 30 or when you are 40. So um, I'll request that uh, find your passion, find that one thing that you want to do. It could be anything. It could, it could be a hobby, it could be, like I said, going to another country, it could be anything. It need not be uh, purely academic. And of course, uh, in terms of profession also, think about it, that what is it that you want to do? Because these four years are three years, four, three to five years, is the most, uh, most crucial part. And I know you've been hearing this since last ten. Class 10 turned over, then you will be sorted, and class 12 turned over, then you will be sorted. But trust me, this is, uh, this is, uh, after, after 30, then there's not much that you can change in life. Then the way you are, that is, you just have to accept life that, that way. So that is one, but also these are your most fun years of life. So that is the difference between class 10 and 12 now. Now, you are independent, but you don't have full responsibility. So this is the most fun phase of life, where you know you will make, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you that till till we are in till we are 18, we are uh, we are minor and we our main world is around our family, and after we are 30 again once you get married and all your again your world is around your family, so this is that in between stage where friends is your world, so uh, like I said that it's a very nice family that you have and uh, cherish that and make a lot of good friends who, who you remember throughout your life. And it's, a, it's very heartening to see that we have so many states of Northeast India all together here. And you can really uh, understand each other and learn from each other how things are different in the other state and how we can do things in a better way. So uh, have a have lot of fun and a lot of uh, make a lot of good memories, like I saw in the pictures. Uh, these, these things, these years will really stay, stay with you. So, um, that said, you want me to talk about lights? Okay. So, um, see, there is a lot of uh, 
material available on the internet. Almost everything for every part of the IS preparation, IS or MPSC or your state civil services, either either one. It is the it is very similar. The, both the patterns are very similar. And uh, so I want you to uh, go through the syllabus and uh, go through the question papers. That will give you a sense of what uh, what is what is asked and what is to be studied and does it interest you? Do you think you'll be able to handle it? That is the first step. Of course, the first step is first you decide whether you want to give it or not. So um, I'll tell you what are the advantages and disadvantages. Very very frankly and honestly, I'll tell you no no hiding and no uh, sugar coating also. That it is very very kind. So the advantages are that. Um, in the Indian society, there is a, a level of respect that is given to civil servants, and that is one of the most one of the reasons why a lot of people leave very high-paying jobs, uh, private jobs in the U.S. in in our country, and they take up the exam and they uh, they struggle two three years, they will struggle, they will study, and they will get. That is one of the major uh, motivating factors for a lot of people. Secondly, uh, I think it is. Uh, it is one of the jobs that gives you a lot of independent responsibility at a very young age. Uh, at, at a very young age, you can be head of a district, head of a department. So, uh, very few other jobs uh, give that. Unless, of course, you start your own startup, that's a different thing. Uh, that, is, that, requires, that requires a lot of uh, hard work and passion. And uh, thirdly, the biggest advantage I feel that uh, there is a huge impact that you can make in the people around you. Uh, your one signature here and there can actually be life changing for the other person. I'll give you a small example. Uh, when I, yeah, this was during my first posting. Right? So first posting, of course, as a regime, you're not doing, you're not making policy that that can really that will uh, change a lot of things. But even at that stage, uh, there was this lady who came to me. Who she was uh, very. A widow, 65 plus, and she wanted uh, me to make her pension. Uh, there's a certificate that you have to furnish to get your pension. There was obviously some technical difficulty in this that her residence was somewhere, but she was living somewhere else. So uh, my staff was not really able to help her out. So uh, I kind of figured out a way, and of course, that sometimes that way may not even be the most correct one on rules and regulations, but you you understand that she is a needy person, she needs that thing. So that larger picture is important. So uh, I got it done. So for her, that one certificate was actually life changing. And this is a very small example that I'm giving. And like this, as as you grow in the service, that, that the decisions that you make affect larger number of people. So every day, the day-to-day -day satisfaction level is very high. Uh, the other great advantage is that our departments keep changing every two three years, so you are never alone. Uh, you have to learn new new things every two three years. So, like I told you, I was in higher education last year. Last year I was all about colleges and students and NARC accreditation, all these things I was doing. And now suddenly I am uh, into totally different things. So it's very interesting and exciting. Now I'll tell you the negatives. Why? Uh, if if these are the things that you have in mind, then I would say that don't. Don't try the services. One is that if money excites you, if you are somebody, and I'm not saying it in a negative way, if you're somebody who is uh, like excited or driven by the amount of money that you're earning, uh, then I would suggest that it's not uh, the most, the best fit for you. You can do so many other things. You can start a business. You can do a private job. There are so many other things which will pay you much, much better, and you can. Uh, You'll be more happy in, in those two things. Secondly, if you are somebody that does not really like um, negotiations and a lot of stakeholders and public dealing and so society, if you are somebody that I want to do, I like to do my job and I don't want to my job to depend on the other person. Like suppose if you are a computer engineer. There are people who like it. I make my software, and it is my ability that will give me, uh, that will give the output. So, if you are that kind of person, then uh, civil services may not be the right, uh, 
right choice. Of course, uh, if you like talking to people, you like... Uh, see, it's only practical now. You, there is no solution. There are a lot of times there will be some problem where there is no solution. Like for example, this road wala, this, that people are crossing your uh, campus. There is no solution. We will have to sit with the VC and convince him, please don't do this. Then there will be some other in between person who will uh, try to sabotage the whole thing. So it's a very practical related uh, job. So if you are that sort of a person that you like uh, talking to people, you like uh, different stakeholders, then it is a, it is a good option. And uh, of course, you should be prepared for postings in any part of the country, in different, different uh, regions, where the language may be different, the culture may be different. So those are things that you should be uh, prepared for. So take a, you are much more smarter now. I think every 10 years the generation becomes uh, much more smarter. So I know that on internet you've seen all the videos. Uh, so you know everything. And the one who don't know, you can just go on YouTube and you, you can see anything under the sun. If you, if you want to go and see Paris, there are such good videos, you don't need to go to Paris. You can just see it on the internet. So, but you should try and get Wi-Fi for them here. So that they can get access to it. So, uh, see, syllabus and those things, uh, of course, once you make your mind, I'm sure you will be able to find those things. The most important thing is making up your mind. That this this has to be done. There is no other option. So uh, that is the most uh, important point. There is, uh, see when I had, I had written the exam in 2015. 15 was the year that I was uh, preparing and uh, writing the exam. And I cleared 15 exam to join the 16 batch. So at that time, things were very, very delicent. That coaching was only in Delhi, best books were in Delhi, and that too right next to their institute. So that is the main area where uh, everything was happening. But you are very lucky that COVID happened, and now everything is online. <coughs> so even from here, you can you can just uh, enroll in the coaching in Delhi, and you can actually do it here. So and uh, uh, there are a lot of online resources now for every topic. Pick up the syllabus, any topic you want. Uh, go online and <coughs> Google it, you will find the best notes possible for it. And a lot of times, in fact, there is there are good videos. And if you see something on a video, it is much easier to remember it, rather than to read it and then to write it. So, uh, UPSC preparation and both state service preparation also has become very democratic now. And in my batch, there are a lot of people who are from very, very different backgrounds. You don't need to be from a Delhi or a Bombay or a big city or from a very good school or from a good college. Uh, we have the highest diversity in our batch and it's amazing how people with such difficult uh, circumstances have made it. So comparatively you guys are very lucky. <laughs> you can definitely do it and make up your mind and it's, if you do it, if you study very hard and work very very sincere, it is a one and a half year effort. One to one and a half year effort. If you do it little, like me, two and a half years. <laughs> but see, it's for the rest of your life. It's, it's just, those two years matter for the rest of your life. So uh, that's mainly what all I had to talk about. Um, I wanted to. The other thing was that uh, I wa I want you all to have a very practical edge in life. See, today uh, the theoretical aspect of anything, let us take horticulture. Suppose if I today I want to find out that uh, what is the best season or what is the best fertilizer to be used in dragon fruit. I can easily find it on Google. I can find nice videos also where they will tell me how to do, what to do. But the actual practical reality will be different from what is there. So that is the thing that you bring to the table. And that is where you will be valued. Even in the coming future, uh, theoretically, everything is available. But practical knowledge is really missing because we have become so much uh, into our phones that we uh, we are forgetting the practical touch of life. So in anything that you do, even if you are a civil servant tomorrow, try to go to the field and try to see actually why is it happening like this, what is happening exactly. So anything, if you are a doctor, if you are... Uh, 
businessman, anything. You, you might take up any job tomorrow. You might uh, do the MBA line. See where, why your customers are not buying your product. Go and see on the on the field. That is very very important. Uh, that said, I think uh, again you are very lucky that now finally COVID is. We have uh, we have learned to live with COVID. That's that is the right way. And uh, your seniors, see, they did not even have offline classes. So you are you are lucky that now you have a full full offline mode. And I hope it will it will not go back to online. And uh, so uh, all the best to you. And uh, I am always there for any kind of uh, mentorship or questions or any. Any doubts that you have, whether it is professional or personal or confusion in life, anything. So it's, it's always uh, very uh, fun to interact with young students. Our India is not very much of you can, you can, a lot, lot of times we meet people who are like in the middle. Like somebody, like when we are asking our parents something, it is difficult to ask our parents. But parents or after reach the boy home in between, that is easier to talk to. So I think I've spoken more than a lot of speaking. Thank you again for coming on Saturday and coming on in the rainy season. I hope to come back soon. I'm here for some time now. I have recently only joined, so I'll be here. Okay, thank you.